What is going on, everybody? This is Adam Potash, and I have Victoria Bays with me. How you doing, Victoria? I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How is the weather over there? It is horrible. It's, <laughs> well, it's it's 420. It's already dark. Mm-hmm. It's like black oh. outside, like no light. Street lights are on. It's cold. It's miserable. I've got a blanket on my knee. That's depressing. But it is, it's proper. It's proper British weather. Like we put the fire on in the evening, and we all get like all snug. So I like that part of it. But yeah, we're hyped. A little gloomy. A little gloomy. Yeah, it is a little. How's the so weather there? I, I think I think it hit like maybe seventy today, and then <laughs> everybody everybody's got their Uggs on and their winter coats and everything. That's no. that's South Florida for you. It drops it drops like ten degrees and uh, yeah will go nuts with their their winter outfits but it's like <laughs> i think it's 70 right now so that's crazy <laughs> crazy that's how it goes <laughs> um so uh we've had some awesome stuff as usual going on in the approach this mm-hmm. week everything's we we've i think added i want to say what 40 members this week yeah, is that right I something like that so. some crazy number it's been crazy i know we've had hundreds of downloads of the app yeah loads of new members it's been very very exciting very very busy very exciting stuff obviously everyone's it's that time of year where people want to get healthy but um we're hoping to help them maintain this through forever for life not just for a holiday season right so yeah and i think it's good i think people want to get ahead of the curve like christmas is coming up they know they've got parties they know they might be at events where it's easy to overeat and they think actually if i can get ahead of it now then you'll go into the new year feeling really good about yourself and not thinking oh I've got to start a whole new diet and a whole new year and you know the weight of those new year's resolutions a perfect example of that you know I had someone I was talking to yesterday who joined the program yesterday and I said you have to put your starting weight and she was all frustrated and flustered oh no I, I, I don't go on the scale and she went on the scale and, and lo and behold, she was, she said she was eight pounds heavier than she thought she was, which was already wow. overweight. Right. And so, yeah. you know, she's like, I can't believe it. So yeah. So she's getting started now, which, and again, most people uh, who want to get ahead of the curve, as you say, are, are starting now and, you know, yeah. at least losing some weight, maybe even 20 pounds by, by the new year. So. Yeah. Well, actually, speaking of that, I know we've not announced who it is yet, so I won't say anything, but we do have to announce today in our community the winner of our Lose a Turkey Before Thanksgiving challenge. Yeah, that's exciting and stuff. The winner lost 7%. Yeah, of, 7% think, bot, yeah. 7% body weight. Yeah, that's in incredible. Three weeks. In three, three weeks. Three in three weeks, weeks time. That's that's yeah. the amazing part. Yeah. So three and that's and a bit pretty weeks. incredible. Yeah huge so it's you know with christmas is still a month away there's an awful lot of progress that you can make in december and then i I don't understand the logic of people you know i go live pretty often and you know i talk to people live and they're like oh i'm gonna wait for this day i'm gonna wait till i get back from this i'm gonna wait i'm like what i don't get that i don't understand that mentality at all like what is that like you're living you're you gotta live life like yeah you know, to have that mentality, I think, is just is so wrong. And it's going to, you know, you're always going to do this back and forth with I'll wait for this and do something and go back and then I'll wait for this. It's just such a like, you know, okay. the, the cold turkey thing, I think, works best. I'm going to start right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. So yeah. with lots of new members comes lots of new questions. So we thought today <laughs> <laughs> we would just go through a lot of questions that we've had on social media and in the community um, this week. So are you ready yeah. to get started? I, I, yeah, I am. And I've been on social media all week long and we've <laughs> had a couple of viral videos go off. So I've been trying to do my best to answer everybody's questions on there too, but shoot. Yeah. So is there a point where your body reaches its maximum potential for weight loss? And what do you do when that happens? Oh, so that's a good question. That's kind of like a, like a two part question, I would say. Uh, and I think when, when people talk about that, they think of either a, a plateau. Um, mm-hmm. and again, we've talked about kind of that set weight, uh, and when hitting a plateau as well, we've talked about that on here before. Um, but yeah, I think your body, you know, is, is happy at certain places or, or is comfortable at certain places. Um, I, I don't really know how to, how to 
answer that properly because you know, if you're at a weight for a long period of time that you're not comfortable with, it's going to take some time to get that off. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't necessarily mean like your body wants to be overweight or wants to be mm -hmm. like, you know, fat and happy, as they say. Um, I, I just think it's going to, if you've been overweight for a certain number of, of years, I say it's going to take some time to get that new quote unquote set weight, right? Yeah. That you're That you're now comfortable with. I don't know if that answers yeah. that question, but that's that's my best answer for that. So I guess for people that have maybe lost the weight and then they're thinking, I'm happy at this weight, this is a good weight. Um, you know, I know we always talk about intermittent fasting and the mm -hmm. approach being a lifestyle and not a diet. Yeah. So you would say at that point where you've lost the excess weight, it's really about judging how you feel in your body, how you feel health-wise and with movement and to sort of determine what weight is best yeah. for you. A hundred percent. Yeah. You, you put it much better than I did. Um, but uh, also like, I always, always tell people, you know, set a goal, you know, mm -hmm. if maybe your goal is uh, I want to be 150 pounds. Right. And then you get to that goal. You're comfortable with that goal. You're kind of hanging out there and you're like, you know what? I think another 10 pounds would be cool. Another five pounds would be great, you know? And so yeah. I think that's a, a, a good way to approach the weight loss. Like hit a goal, be comfortable there and see, you know, how you feel about maybe making some other changes, you know, healthier, this adapting, this getting more sleep, whatever it may be to, to hit yeah. maybe even another goal after that. Perfect. Somebody else has asked, why do I keep getting headaches in the morning? And they've oh. said that that makes helps that makes them really struggle with sticking to the I love it when I hear people getting headaches. I know that's very sadistic. I, I know, trust me. I know what I sound like, but but it's such a it's such a good sign um that either a you are detoxing detoxifying your body from all the garbage, you've switched things up and that sugar addiction, that caffeine addiction, whatever you you're not doing as much of is now like your body's kind of speaking to you. Um and B, it could just be as simple, you're dehydrated, right? Because if you're having food in the morning, there is some, uh, you know, hydration properties to that food, whether you're eating vegetables or whatever. Um, and now if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're not consuming anything in the morning, uh, you're going to need, uh, you know, even more water intake. So that's, to me, those are good signs that you're doing something, right? Yeah. Your body's speaking to you. It's funny. I remember when I went through a phase of giving up caffeine and thinking, right, I'm going to give up caffeine and see how I go without it. And I honestly, I, I was close to checking into the doctors and saying I was dying because the headaches were awful. It's like really significant. But I remember thinking how crazy that if this is causing this, then this is something that I shouldn't be having all the time. It's yeah. And so when New Year's, uh, comes I usually do like a kind of a 30 day I don't want to call it a detox it's more of a challenge to myself yeah I don't like yeah. the detox thing I'm not really doing it for detox I generally eat healthy you know throughout the year but I do more yeah. of a challenge like that sugar I, I do no sugar no uh, caffeine yeah. no alcohol for 30 days and it yeah. sucks it I yeah. am <laughs> the most miserable person on the planet yeah like, do not come near me <laughs> Um, and, but like you said, it's, it's your body's speaking to you, like how addicted to you, are you to these things yeah. that you, your body's like, I don't know, rebelling. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, somebody said, what about women with PCOS? Can they do fasting? A hundred percent. And more and more studies are coming out on this PCOS perimenopausal menopause, that it is helping number one, stabilize, stabilizing women's hormones. Uh, mm -hmm. And what intermittent fasting does is actually boost your human growth hormone, which is your fat burning hormone. Uh, mm -hmm. So hundred percent, uh, you know, probably about, well, 90% of our members are women, I would say. Yeah. And I think 60% of that 90 are in menopause or have some sort of health concern yeah. like PCOS or Hashimoto's or whatever. And yeah. we are seeing results across the board. There, there's not like a category that we're not seeing results in. So that's the amazing part yeah. to intermittent fasting. Completely, completely yeah. agree. Um, is salad dressing okay? Oh my God, I have seen this so <laughs> much lately. I don't know where Very you're much. getting this from because I have literally seen it 10 times on either 
TikTok yeah. or Instagram. What is with this? Are, are like there yeah. diets out there where, where they're saying like you cannot put any dressing on your salad? Like what's going on? I, I think I think it's a calorie thing. I think it's because people <laughs> I, I think people think if they're counting calories and they have a salad, they think, oh, there can't be that you know many calories and the calorific item is always the dressing so i think yeah. i think that's probably where it stems from i yeah. guess I, I mean that makes sense to me i i didn't know where it came from really but um yeah i mean there's with everything right there's better salad dressings and there's worse salad dressings right you can yeah. do olive oil and and vinegar or you can do uh your buffalo ranch i don't know yeah um yeah so we're not against salad dressings. I'll say that for the record. But yes, there are better, healthier salad dressings for you. My suggestion, uh, and I'm giving you some inside approach tips here, are just to do anything that yeah. says like a vinaigrette in the name. If you do any kind yeah. of vinaigrette, I think you're good to go. Yeah. Somebody says, I have plateaued. The scale is not moving. I'm fasting, walking, and watching what I eat. Yeah, Help. I would. I would say... The walking isn't going to help you lose weight, number one, but I would say that you're not fasting. Um, and mm -hmm. this is the this is the the thing we hear all the time is that people think they're doing it and not seeing the results. And I go back to you, you're not fasting. In 15 years of coaching people, I've never had somebody not lose weight when I've monitored them and made sure that they were actually fasting. Um, my suggestion would be write down, if you're not on our app, which you should be, uh, okay. write down everything that you're consuming so you get to see you know, all those little details. And guaranteed, uh -huh. you're breaking your fast with supplements or vitamins, uh, a little creamer or milk in your coffee where you think it's not going to do anything. Uh, something is breaking your fast. Mm -hmm. um, and you just kind of kind of take a step back and look at those things. Or there's other factors like, you know, your stress to the max, right? Like we have a member right now um, that is doing really well with the program, but her job has her like, you know, yeah. freaked out. Uh, she's just, it's that time of year for her job and her stress level is at, at like an 11, right? Mm -hmm. And so our advice to her is, just kind of let's maintain right now. Don't don't kill yourself. Don't beat yourself up with the weight loss right now. The stress isn't going to go away for the next three to four weeks. Right. So let's yeah. kind of just sit back, maintain, manage this stress, and then we'll get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the problem with protein shakes? That's what somebody <laughs> asked. <laughs> Another thing that I've heard like a million times this week. It's so funny. You're like seeing this. Maybe we're, we're looking at the same post or something, but <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm not a fan of the protein shakes. God gave us big, beautiful, pearly white teeth in our mouth to chew on food. Uh, the act of chewing actually sends signals to our brain to start taking yeah. on nutrients and vitamins. If you think about this, you know, um, we have been around for 300,000 years and a straw was maybe invented. I don't know, a hundred years ago. I don't know, something like yeah. that. Who, who knows? But, yeah. um, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be, um, you know, slurping our our meals through a straw. Okay, and mm -hmm. the whole big thing with you know needing so much protein, uh, I'm not a fan of that either. You know, the longest living people on our planet, they're not they're not worried about their protein intake. You know. Yeah, that was my next question actually, because somebody had said two two meals and a snack is not enough time to get enough protein in, and I just thought how interesting that the only focus is on protein. Yeah. Of, you know, I think this has come over the last um, several years of just protein bars and protein shakes and protein drinks. We, we all know that, number one, there's no regulation on any of these things, right? You can go mm -hmm. out and get your protein supplements and I can, you know, my seven-year-old can go create a protein line if you wanted to. Um, yeah. So there's no regulation. So we've seen a big boost, obviously, in the early 90s. And obviously, um, it, it's taken off from there of, of all these protein supplements. And, yeah. and it started off really in California and all these bodybuilders and stuff like that. And it's just, oh, everybody thinks they need all this protein now. And it's just, yeah. I, I don't I don't get it. You're not you're not doing anything that you're going to need that much protein unless you're yeah. training for something crazy. Like even when I train for my ultra marathons, like I don't like really intake that much more protein. Um, yeah. I just I don't No, so. I mean, it's always everybody's first question to me because I'm vegan is always or when I tell protein? them Isaac's vegan, they're like, where are you getting your protein from? Yeah. And it's just like 
you know, it's never been an issue for us. Like Isaac is so healthy. He's you're, you're looking been... okay. You're feeling okay. You're getting... <laughs> I'm doing okay. I think <laughs> it's like all of our blood work always comes back okay. Like we're always, you know, a meal fills us up because that's the other thing. As people say, oh, as a vegan, if you're not, you. yeah, if you're not eating enough protein, you're going to eat too many calories because you won't be full. I'm like, okay, I'm full. It's fine. <laughs> like it's... we eat such a range of proteins. Yeah, and 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 we can go into the details of like how broccoli has more protein than steak and and stuff like yeah. that. But it's such a misinformation out there. And if you like yeah. trace it back, you know, it's somebody selling a product somewhere of, you know, yeah. why why you think you need more protein. It's just not not the case at all. Yeah, I know. I mean, again, if you think of how long humans have been on the planet, and yeah. you know how recent in terms of that all of the big marketing ploys for protein shakes and all of the different things vitamins a, supplements all those things like yeah. very interesting it's a blip right it's a blip in our system right now for sure for sure <laughs> does chewing gum break your fast yes it can it, it really can and and everyone's gonna say oh but it's sugar-free and zero calorie it's all <laughs> the artificial sweeteners in there that'll just set your body off and create that insulin response in your body so you got to be careful with it um and then i know there's a question of oh i had bad breath because i'm not eating i'm like um uh, i don't know do do some mouthwash or something if you feel like you have yeah. bad breath. i, I don't brush know but <laughs> <laughs> brush your teeth right yeah yeah um but uh yeah it can so i just i, I advise to stay away from it in the morning you know chew your gum after your meal or whatever that's okay but uh be careful yeah. with that yeah so final one you actually answered this online but i think it would be useful for people to see somebody said is it safe for me to fast with reactive hyperglycemia I struggle badly and I'm up at midnight and three in the morning every night. Yeah. For, so for something like that, obviously it's a little bit of more of a, of a special case, things like that, or even type I've health coach type one diabetics on intermittent fasting, not recommended uh, cause it's a little more difficult, but um, my suggestion would be number one, obviously look at the foods that you're intaking uh, mm -hmm. and it's really specific on the, the foods you should be intaking uh, during your eating window. Uh, but also you want to make sure that you're eating within a time that works best for you. So you might want right. to shift your times a little earlier, if that makes sense for you. Um, so do that. And, you know, worst case, you might want to go down to like a 15 hour fast instead of a 16 and still, you know, get some benefits. I wouldn't recommend yeah. that for, for most people, but in certain situations, you know, that might work best. You'll still gain some benefits of a 15 hour fast, move it a little earlier if that helps you. And then obviously make sure you're getting, you know, the proper nutrients in your diet that you need. And I guess that's one of the benefits on the approach of actually having a health coach that you can speak to about these things, because everybody does have a slightly different situation, be it working hours. You know, we get people all the time mm -hmm. saying, I work nights, how am I going to make this work? And yeah. I think having that coach on the approach who's able to actually help you navigate your individual situation is so, so useful. It's the most important thing. I mean, I, I've talked about this so many times, like everybody needs somebody, right? I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're a mom or a business owner, whatever. we all need people to to help us out, you know, yeah. um, and having a coach in your pocket uh, every single day, by the way, is, is unbelievable. And uh, I don't yeah. believe there is another program out there that offers what we offer and not to plug our, our, ourselves on our program, but it's just, that's what this is all about. It's, it's about getting that, uh, that accountability, that that reassurance that you're doing the right thing um, every day. Like someone's not checking up on you once a month. Like no. it's 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 every day that they're making sure you're you're okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's there's no other accountability like we have in the approach. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Wow, that was some today. Spitfire questions there. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah. Any, I know we got the holidays coming up. We're, we're coming up on December here soon. Uh, what are your plans for the holidays? I know you just did some traveling. You doing yeah, anything? Yeah, we're, we're just in full on Christmas mode now. So we're just, we're getting our tree this weekend. I saw you already put yours up. We did ours on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. I've Pretty got all the decorations down from our roof and we're like, we're getting our real tree this weekend. We always go out and get a real tree, um, yeah. get it all decorated and then... Oh, I'm booked into various 
Santa events and a Santa disco with Isaac. Ooh, and, a Santa disco. Yeah, Santa grotto at the garden <laughs> center. And I'm just in full on Christmas mode. And then we go to my mum's on Christmas day. I'm hosting Christmas Eve for both my- Do you and open Adam. gifts Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Christmas morning. Okay. Like yeah. Isaac, Santa's coming for Isaac, right? Yeah. So okay. we'll put we'll put out like the carrot and some like a mince pie and some whiskey that Adam will drink on nice. like a little board under the under the tree. I love it. You got you got yeah. a bougie uh, uh yeah, yeah. Uh, Santa. And then <laughs> last year I did last year I made little like reindeer footprints as well, so that when Isaac came down in the morning, he thought he could see the reindeer footprints and stuff and inside the he, house. Yeah, leading to the door. So he nice. was just like, oh, my God, the reindeer, mom, the reindeer. You're so, such a good mom. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's it. what you get to do when you have one child, right? You get to do all these yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get to exactly be so that. creative. <laughs> I know. I know. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, well, that's cool. And yeah, then so you. you'll do your mom's the, the day of. Yeah. So I host Christmas Eve for mine and Adam's families. So everyone comes to us. And then Christmas Day will be at my mom's. And Isaac's so. not the only child or grandchild, right? Well, on my side, he is. Oh, on really? Adam, yeah, so he'll be center he'll be of attention. Spoiled, uh, spoiled to bits, huh? Yeah, yeah, awesome. he is. Um, yeah, there's other cousins for him on Adam's side, but we don't see them on Christmas Day, so... Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so it's, Christmas is the, is the jam. It's the dip. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> we love Christmas. Very we love cool. It. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of your your vegetarian treats. Yes. Uh, for for Christmas, that'll be cool. You should share those oh, in the community. I will do. I will. Yeah. Very exciting. So, some more pepper boats or pepper yeah. train pepper trains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I'll I'll think of something to do. Something cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, <laughs> awesome guys. Well, thank you so much, Victoria. If you guys want any more information about the approach or about the program, uh, please just go to the app store, the play store and download the approach. It is the easiest thing to do. You can do our month to month program. You can do our five month program and get the six months for free. Or if, uh, you're really needing some guidance, do our eight month program and you get four months free. It's a $200 savings on that one. So that's pretty cool. Um, cool. Thank you so much. Awesome. Been a pleasure. All right. Ciao.